The Longest Night, a warrior's holiday fanfiction by Kate Carey. Grace Drep reached up and hooked another pine cone onto the side of the elders' den. Millie nudged him. Move it a bit higher. You can't reach any higher. Grace Drep puffed, his hind legs trembling. Thunderclan were decorating the camp for the longest night celebrations. Lark Kit and Leaf Kit were charging through the bracken at the edge of the camp, their pelts prickling with excitement. Honey Kit sat beside Squirrel Flight as the Thunder Clan deputy poked a piece of holly above the entrance to the warrior's den. The white she cat held a pine cone between her paws. Can I hang this one up? she asked shyly. Of course! Squirrel Flight ducked down. Climb onto my shoulders. Try to hook it next to the holly. As Honey Kit scrambled onto Squirrel Flight's back, Lily Heart purred fondly. The queen was standing beside Millie. I'm going to check a mouse by the new china in their nest while they're sleeping. She confided. Grace Strap dropped onto all fours. I made a new moss ball for them, he whispered, one eye on the kids. Jay Feather let me hide a few sprays of catnip in it to make it more fun to play with. Lily Hart blinked at him fondly. Thanks, Grace Strap. They'll love it. As he spoke, Bramble Star called from High Ledge. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey gather to hear my words. He eyed at the kids sternly as they followed their clanmates, hopefully towards the clearing. Not you. This news is for warriors ears only. As Greystripe followed his clanmates towards the clearing to hear Bramble Star's words, he blinked sympathetically at Lark Kit, Leaf Kit, and Honey Kit. Lily Hart was shooing them into the nursery. It had been many moons since his own mother had heard him away from the clan meeting. It was when Blue Star had been leader, before Firestar had joined the clan. Sadness pricked his heart as he thought of his old friend. As Greystar reached the shadow of High Ledge, he sighed. The longest night wouldn't be the same without Firestar. When he and Firestar had been younger, they'd left gifts of shoes and bowls outside the elders' den after the clan was asleep. <laughs> now I'm an elder, he thought. He sat down behind Whitewing and Poppy Frost and wondered hopefully if any of the younger cats would leave gifts for him. Millie nosed past Mole Whisker and Berry Nose and settled beside him. She glanced anxiously up at Bramble Star. He looks worried. Greystrap followed her gaze. The ThunderClan leader was pacing High Ledge as the clan gathered beneath. Lily Hart squeezed in beside him. She glanced towards the nursery. The kids are so excited about the longest night. I hope they keep quiet during the meeting. As she spoke, squeaks sounded from the bramble den. It's not fair, Leafkit complained. Why can't we listen? Larkkit chimed. Hush, Leafkit mewed anxiously. Lilyheart said Starclan won't send us gifts if we're too noisy. Lilyheart's pelt rippled self-consciously as Whitewing and Papa Frost turned to glance at her sympathetically. If only they didn't mew so loudly, she fretted. They're only kids, Graystrap reassured her. He could smell fresh mouse on her breath. His belly rumbled and he leaned closer to Millie. I hope whatever is worrying Bramble Star doesn't take too long. I'm hungry. He eyed the prey pile longingly. There was only a skinny thrush left. The clan was in the deepest part of Leaf Bear, but tomorrow the days would begin to shorten and prey would start to return to the forest. Bramble Star interrupted Greystripe's thoughts. He stared down from High Ledge, anxiety glittering in his gaze. Star Clan has spoken to Jay Feather. Greystripe turned to look at the Thunder Clan medicine cat, who sat at the entrance to his den, his blind blue gaze unreadable as Bramble Star went on. Clear sky warned that the longest night may never end. News rippled uneasily through the clan. A squeak of alarm sounded from the nursery. Leafkit was peering out. Does that mean we won't get any gifts? Bramble Star's gaze flashed towards the kit. I wish that's all it meant, he growled darkly. Graystripe's belly tightened. The longest night may never end? What could Starclan mean? He looked at the sky. Thick snow clouds were gathering over the hollow. Millie shifted closer, his soft fur brush in his, and called up to Bramble Star. Did Starclan tell us what we should do? Bramble Star returned her stare blankly. 
They say that dawn will only return when we have found the star. Grayscribe struggle through the thick snow that swamped the clearing. The trenches, which Thunderclan had dug yesterday, were already filled with fresh snow so deep his paws couldn't reach the frozen earth beneath. He shivered as the ice-cold air pierced his pelt. The snow was still falling, the sky as dark as it has been since the longest night. Blizzards had ravaged the forest for three days. At least the wind had dropped this morning and through the eerie silence, Graystrap could hear branches creak and snap under the weight of snow. I'm starving! Anakit's plaintive mew sundered through the snow blasted nursery wall. We'll be able to hunt soon, Lilyheart promised. Graystrap hoped the queen was right. His own belly was hollow with hunger. The blizzard had made hunting impossible. A clump of snow landed beside him. He looked up. Bramblestar was gazing down from High Ledge. The blizzard stopped, Grayscrap observed hopefully. Perhaps the longest night is finally over. We haven't found a star yet, Bramblestar growled darkly. Grayscrap's belly tightened as he remembered Starclan's prophecy. The longest night will not end until we have found the star. The Thunderclan leader glanced at the sky. Darker clouds were moving in. It looks like another blizzard is on its way. We should hunt while we can, Grayscrap advised. I've already sent out two patrols. Brumblestar nodded towards the entrance, where the snow had been churned by paws. I'll go and help them. Graystrap couldn't stay in his den while his clanmates were starving. It's too cold, Brumblestar warned. Your pelt's not as thick as it used to be. You should stay with me, Lee. Graystrap glared at him. My pelt is thick enough, he growled. And in snow like this, pay would be hard to find. I want to help my clan. Bramblestar nodded. Then I'll come with you. He scrambled down the rock tumble, spraying snow over the Greystrap. Greystrap shook it from his belt. He scented an iron tang in the hardening wind. The fresh blizzard was closing in fast. We don't have long. Bramblestar caught his eye, fear glittering in the amber depths. Let's hurry. Together, they headed for the entrance. Wind scoured snow from the branches as Graystripe and Bramblestar pushed through the strengthening wind. Bramblestar slowed. Look, we should head back to camp. We haven't caught any prey. Graystripe shook out his belt. Snow clung to his fur, frozen at the tips. His paws stung by the icicle. Liliard's kids are starving. Ugh. We won't help them by freezing to death in this storm. Bramblestar glazed at him solemnly. Graystripe pushed on through the snow. There is a mouse nest ahead. I found it moons ago. It was always a good place to hunt and leave there. He glanced over his shoulder at Bramblestar. You head back. I'm not leaving you. You need to check the other patrols got home safely. They're more important to the clan than me. Graystripe saw hesitation flash in the Thunderclan leader's eyes and knew he'd hit the nerve. The clan needs you. I can take care of myself, he pressed. The nest is only a few tail lengths ahead. I'll shake it and head back to the hollow. Okay. Rumble star conceded. But don't be long. He dipped his head and turned towards the camp. The wind roared now and rocked the trees. Snow whipped between the trunks. Graystrap narrowed his eyes as flakes stung his face. As he headed for a tall oak, memories flooded him. He'd hunted with Firestar on a day almost as snowy as this. They both had been passing the day before they'd come to the lake and had competed to see who could take the fattest mouse home for the prairie pie. Hunger burled in his belly, jerking him from his thoughts. Was the mouse nest still here? Would he find it if he dug deep enough? A flash of fire caught his eye, stiffening, he stared between the trees. Through the haze of swirling snow, he could see an orange pelt. A tom! What was another cat doing out here? Had a kitty pet got lost in the storm? The tom's pelt seemed to sparkle, as though stars were caught in his fur. 
first sharp caught his breath as an old familiar scent touched his nose. Two green eyes flashed as the Tom turned to look at him. Firestar's heart leaped. Firestar? He heaved himself through the thickening snow. Firestar blinked as he saw him. Graystripe? Is that you? Of course it's me! Graystripe reached his old friend, joy floating his chest. What are you doing in the forest? Firestar stared at him bleakly. I miss my old clanmates. But you have Stark down now. Greystripe started in surprise. Who would want to leave the sunny meadows of endless hunting to come here? Firestar didn't seem to hear him. Affection shone in his round green eyes. It's so good to see you. How's Thunderclan? How was the longest night? Did you leave the treats to the elders? Greystripe touched his nose gently to Firestar's sheep. <laughs> I'm an elder now, remember? You? Firestar blinked at him. You must know that. Greystripe mewed softly. Firestar closed his eyes as though covering grief. Greystripe pressed against him. It's good to see you too, old friend. But you can't stay here. Go back to Starkland. Thunderclan is never far away. We keep you in our hearts and always will. The stars in Firestar's pelt seemed to sparkle more fiercely as the storm whipped around them. But I miss you. You have to go back. The prophecy flashed in Greystripe's thoughts. The longest night will not end until you have found the star. Starkland needs you. We have Bramble Star now. He's a great leader. He shows well when you made him deputy. Thunderclan are safe with him. I know. Firestar touched his muscle to Greystripe's cheek. But it's hard to read. I miss you. Greystripe breathed. But I'll be with you soon enough. As he spoke, Firestar's fiery pulp began to fade. The stars in his fur dimmed and blinked out. He grew pale until only paw marks showed where he'd stood. Goodbye. Grief swamped his drive as the wind snatched Firestar's lingering scent. Suddenly, the snow ceased, the wind eased and the trees grew still. Silence gripped the forest. I found the star. The blizzard was over. The longest night had ended at last. Greystripe's heart lifted as he heard the sound of prey scrabbling beneath the snow. Mice! Lillehart's kids would eat today. The memory of Firestar burned bright in his thoughts as he began to dig eagerly towards the mouse nest. <laughs>